So, it's time to start. Hopefully you've all had time to get a headset and are sitting comfortably. Now, before I kick off this day's uh, uh, symposium on patient dynamics, innovating and measuring, I have to apologize on behalf of the health minister who was supposed to give our opening speech this morning and who unfortunately is unable to be with us because she uh, has some urgent uh, negotiations uh, at the parliament this morning. So hopefully it will enable us to start the sessions earlier and have more time for debate. Now, first of all, let me thank all of the people who have come today. Thank you very much for being here, all of the MPs, elected representatives, the chairman of the council, Anne-Marie Broca, uh, chairman of uh, the president and director of ATIH, the vice president of CISS, Claude Rambaud, general delegates and representatives of federations, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of association, patient associations and user associations, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me also thank the Social Affairs and Health Ministry for hosting this conference today. It's a little bit of a smaller room compared to the number of people who uh, wanted to take part, but perhaps that will also allow more time for discussion. Now, I'm very happy uh, for you all to be part of this symposium this year. Uh, it's our annual conference, and we've called it quite simply dynamic, Patient Dynamics, Innovating and Measuring. And since its premises in 1945, which is when the hu hospital humanization movement kicked off, the history of user rights and health democracy has really uh, changed and evolved as uh, cultural change took place and society changed. And this movement really kicked off with a law in 2002 on the 4th of March with a law called the Krishna Law for uh, patient rights. And one part of that was about uh, sanitary health democracy. Uh, we recently modernized our health law again in January 2016. And that's been in the same vein and really tried to answer certain expectations that our users and patients were uh, looking for. And this law uh, allows for class action, direct settlement, it boosts also patient information, uh, harmonizes user rights between the different health sectors and medical social sectors, and really broadens the scope of the user commissions within uh, the organizations. It also uh, allows user representatives to be present in all boards of administrations, whatever specialization we're talking about. It set up the National Union for uh, User Accredited User Associations and also allows people the erasure of records, uh, of personal records, if they've been ill or are ill. And another law in February 2016 has set up new rights for people, uh, for patients and people who are nearing the end of their life in the same vein, and it allows really for the patient's uh, um, own choice to be made very, very clear. And it's more important than the doctor's choice, for instance, especially if they want to refuse some kind of treatment. When uh, the patient has explicited his last wishes, they have to be taken into account. Now, of course, all of these are assets that we have acquired over time, but perhaps we should also preempt the future and try and think together about how this whole movement is going to move forward. Now, our agency is a public actor for uh, the democracy of health, and we've really tried to work in this direction. We've tried to be committed, uh, choose the right methodology, but we want to be innovative as well. And of course, that is a very broad scope. I'm talking here about certification and accreditation of doctors or organizations, uh, defining good practice and uh, the right kind of uh, uh, care, and generally to deal with health uh, uh, things. So I think it's our role to look to the future 
and decide what kind of a policy we need. And we want you to help us. Now, patient engagement and user engagement is something that's very important uh, for us. And of course, these associations are very active. So we thought it would be useful to really think about how useful our basic role is, improving health care for all. And of course, here I'm talking very broadly about health care. In the 1990s, there was uh, a workshop that took place in Salzburg, and there was something that was quite striking that was uh, quoted there. I'll say it in English. It's nothing about me without me. But this sentence really puts the patient at the heart of the decisions, whether it's about the quality of care they're receiving uh, collectively or individually. And of course, patient and user commitment is really at the heart of these health systems and how they move forward, whether it's in France or abroad. And these developments are uh, in response to a need for more transparency and information. And thank goodness we've got the digital revolution to help us with that. But it's also about uh, exchanges between patients with uh, more and more collective empowerment systems. So patients who are exchanging and uh, being empowered on IT platforms. But they're also a result of epidemiological factors. Pathologies are more and more complex, diseases are chronic, and uh, the patient might want to know more about their treatment or just about their pathway, uh, which they may have felt has been a bit neglected. Sometimes the patient actually knows better than the carers or the doctors about what should be done. And actually, philosophically speaking, respecting the right to an individual's uh, right to make their own choices is important because sometimes we forget what the Hippocratic Oath says, which says, I will respect all people, their autonomy and their choice without discriminating against their health or their beliefs. So autonomy and choice. These are the key words. And as I already said, our organization has really tried to expand this democracy in the field of health. We've implemented uh, user representation groups in our different commissions, whether it's about certification for our health establishments or uh, for drawing up recommendations on uh, pathways or the Economic Commission for Public Health or uh, on uh, drugs on controlled acts or medical devices. These uh, user representatives uh, take part in these commissions and actually have a status as experts since 2008. And this year, we launched a program called eSatis, which measures patient satisfaction, inpatient satisfaction throughout France. And we'll be talking more about that. But we now integrate that notion, that sense of satisfaction that patients have just after they've spent time in hospital. Hospital. They can comment on the quality of the care that they've received. And that in itself is a revolution. Now, we also have what we call uh, assessing patient, uh, patient traces. So that is something that is now part and parcel of the certification process in the 2014 version. And this was really uh, requested by our teams in the field because of its close link to the actual situation that patients were living. Now, this movement of integration and involving patients a lot more has uh, really advanced over time. And this year, we are trying a new experiment. We're really uh, trying to identify patient needs and expectations before we uh, set up the medical devices or procedures. But today here in this symposium, we want to go even further because patients and users, more broadly speaking, are the end users and beneficiaries of our commitment uh, and our care. So we want to extend the scope of what we're talking about today, not uh, as far as rights go or patient rights go, but more under a scientific prism, which is really the driver, we feel, of our added value. And that's what we're here to talk about, patient dynamics, innovating and measuring. And so I thought it was 
uh, sensible to uh, look at the emerging methods or uh, about what the patients want, taking into account their points of view. How can we measure the impact of these new procedures and experimentations? And of those who are using the health system on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, can they be actors of its development? And that's uh, what I think we should be doing today. We should be shedding new light on our methodology and scientific evaluation, uh, whether it's experiments that are taking place in France or abroad. And so we have three sessions today uh, dealing with the different uh, uh, things, uh, d the different uh, missions that the HAS has. The first is about uh, really giving more importance to the user involvement in the healthcare, generally speaking, and its quality. The second session will take a look at the patient user um, expectations and uh, how they've been cared for on an individual level. And we'll uh, hear from people on primary care and outpatient care because it really is one of our future priorities. This third session will take a look at patient needs and preferences and how these can feed into a very regulated and procedural assessment of our health technology. So all of these sessions will take into account experience from other countries. And thank you very much for uh, representatives from all of these different countries for coming today from the US, from Canada, from the UK, from the Netherlands, from Belgium, from Germany, and of course from France. Uh, but thank you in particular to Angela Coulter, who is our guest speaker. And she is the Director of Global Initiatives, Informed Medical Decisions Foundation in the US. She is a doctor in philosophy, uh, an analyst and researcher in health policy, and is specifically interested in patient in public involvement. So she'll be here uh, to help us through these sessions and give us her conclusions. Thank you very much for your attention. And now over to our speakers.